when it comes to the Latino youth, more than often they won't join the English group. So how do you create that bridge? Well, you must emphasize that your events and your mission trips and any major logistic planning needs needs them at the table as one group. I understand perhaps for logistic on Sunday mornings, you might have two different groups and there is value in groups being separated, providing cultural places to belong and that's essential, yes? But on significant events and on trips, come together as one group. As a Latin person, I often felt that I got leftovers and it wasn't meant that way, but people would say, here, we had this leftover from our event. Uh, so think about that. Are the Latino youth in part of the planning or are they an afterthought? In terms of space, we think about the differences between the groups. Where do you meet, where do they meet? And when it comes to connecting both groups, it was essential for me to realize that our congregation was one, but we had two different cultures, ultimately one body, yes? And so how do we bridge this gap? Well, you might reach out to the Latino pastor and ask them to join you on these events, or you visit them and you connect with their community. So when I held a confirmation classes, I asked the Latino pastor to join us to talk about communion. And we both decided that it was in the best interest of our youth group to hold one communion worship that I would lead for both groups through the whole year. Now, our English friends came to realize that us Latinos, we go all out when it comes to confirmation and celebration. I mean, look at this clothing. We had to look wonderful. We had tamales. We had all kinds of food. I'm getting hungry just thinking about this. But in the church setting, this is what one body looks like. This is intersectionality at its best. So again, think about what you have around, how it connects in your context.